this computer. Okay, great. So, uh, perfect. So it's four o'clock, four o'clock in London. Thank you all for being here. Um, it's great to see that we have so many people from all parts of the world. You know, it's fascinating. I can see America, London, parts of Europe, uh, Asia. You know, it's great to see people. So first of all, I would like everyone to, uh, who wants to be a part of the discussion, please put your video on. Uh, you know, it's important that we all see each other, you know. Um, number two, um, we're fashionably in. We've been doing uh, trade shows for the last couple of years uh, since everything is uh, virtual now. You know, I mean, it's so sad. We're hoping we were hoping that September we would do our show again in London, but um, highly, highly doubtful right now. So, you know, I mean, maybe this year's a write off, but virtual is working really well right now. It's been great because um, I can see a lot of business actually happening. Buyers are more responsive than before, you know. So, you know, this is a great thing and it's a good opportunity. Uh, so today is actually our last webinar till June, because uh, in June, we're doing a three-day festival, which we're going to tell you about. We were doing weekly webinars, and today is our last webinar, and the next one's in June. So June 12th to June 15th, we got eight shows a day, starting at 10 o'clock London time, ending at 7 o'clock uh, London time. So we have nonstop 24 different categories covering every single aspect of the fashion and lifestyle industry. So so we've realized that it's it's very important for to be segmented for B2B meetings. You know, like today's web, today's women's wear. So I would like restrict everyone. I know you, you're a factory, you may be doing, or you're a, you may be doing men's wear, you may be doing other things, but today let's restrict our conversation specifically to the women's wear industry. Let's understand, let's learn from each other and most importantly, gain from each other, you know? So today we've got two, uh, chief, uh, two uh, special guests. One is Ankita uh, from India and the other one's also from India, Shriya. So they both are gonna be telling us about their experience with women's wear. And uh, then moving forward, we're just gonna to talk to all the other panelists, other people, stores, boutiques. I can see people here from all over. And uh, like once again, just be casual because it's completely informal, right? We want people to meet each other and connect. That's the idea of today's webinar. So thank you all uh, for being here. Uh, I just wanted to say it's great to see everyone again and let's and and one more thing we've got Adam and Alice who's going to be co-hosting with us because I'm in a place where the network is extremely bad so we've got uh, co-host Adam and Alice who's joining us from London as well and uh, so uh, before before we uh, start is there anyone else who would like to quickly introduce themselves or say something uh, anyone Arun, you must allow everybody uh, in a in a in a line, so that will be much better. You know, I can see Hina. You can introduce yourself. So, like, you know, everybody know each other pretty well. Sure, sure, sure. But the problem is, we we're we're, we're strapped on time. You know, so I would love for ev give give everyone a chance, but we've got exactly one hour that we have to make the make the most of. So, um, is there anyone would that would like? To, I see white white canvas. Would you like to introduce him introduce yourself? Sure, sure. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Arshna from White Canvas. I'm a partner in the brand. So we currently have two stores. One is in India, where, where it's in Madhya Pradesh, Indore. And the other one is in Istanbul, Turkey. So they're actually doing very, uh, you know, different work because in India, we do a lot of occasion wear and a lot of wedding wear, you know, catering especially to women's wear. And in Istanbul, we're more towards casual. And uh, we're sort of moving towards the category where we're trying to be more conscious. And uh, we're trying to create products from, you know, which are handmade, hand dyed, hand embroidered for that matter, and which is very difficult to do in Istanbul, especially uh, because, you, you know, like all the people from India would know that it's much easier to produce in India than, than it is to, you know, in somewhere else in the world. So we're trying to reach out to people who care about this cause that we care about, which is basically sustainability. But uh, I mean, we generally believe that sustainability is a lifestyle like how Zenvan mentioned earlier. It's not, it cannot be focused towards one part of your organization. It has to be very holistic. Um, you know, and unless you sort of uh, imbibe it in your personal philosophy, it's very hard for your organization to follow. So we're trying, uh, you know, to make our brand more conscious and uh, we're sort of moving towards that category. So, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So, Lavia Couture, we were speaking earlier and, 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 and then we left. Uh, so, uh, 
you're, you're in you're in America right now, right? Correct. So just can you tell us more about some of the trends that you're seeing in women's wear uh, and, and any, anything that you'd like to share that, but that's, that's, that's hot right now, post-COVID? A trend that's in women's wear that's mostly, well, I'm in Chicago, so usually by state, the women's fashion is kind of different. Is there, can you hear me good? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you, we can hear you. Yeah, there's no disturbance. Oh, okay. Um, but the styles that I mostly see, Chicago's fashion isn't really, everyone has their own look of fashion, but as far as the trend go in fashion, they're mostly... You have to unmute, yeah. Can you hear me now? Is it better? Yeah, perfect, yeah. Okay. So yeah, mostly the the majority of looks that I see is more the urban looks. So they're wearing um, the jumpsuits. They're wearing, um, of course, leggings, but that really isn't an outfit. That's more of lingerie or hosiery. But um, they're more they're wearing more of that. Um, when it comes to dressing up, of course, it's the glittery dresses, the crystals, the shorter cuts. If it's longer, they're high splits. Um, sheer, they're incorporating lace and things like that. Of course, um, like the flesh tone power netting to give that sheer effect and things like that. So it just depends on what the event is. Everyone has their own look, but as far as the majority of everyone's fashion, the woman's department, it's more of a comfortability look. So it's like the sweatsuits. Like you see what, what's on TV, like the sweatsuits, the jeans, the t-shirts, and things like that. When it comes, it's more of a comfortability type situation, like the sandals and versus like um, a really tailored shoe or something that's really structured in a foot in the, you know, in the shoe department. Um, they're gym shoes, flip-flop sandals, the slide-ins, you know, the ones that um, uh, Gucci makes, uh, the Fila's and all that, the Nike, they're wearing all of those. So it's like a mishmash of everything, but it's more based upon the most comfortability they can possibly get out of the wear. So you, you know, is it is it because obviously people are staying at home? You're seeing you're seeing this whole trend of people looking at more comfort clothing, and that's what you're seeing more. Pretty of. Pretty much because they're at home, they're gonna run out really quick. I'm not gonna be out too long. You know, I can really I'm gonna do my hair more than anything and wear a really cute bag with you know the most expensive bag I probably can find if I do that, and just to look like something because you're not really going to the events that were scheduled. You're not really going. You know, the move even the movies, the movie theaters aren't open. Everything's on Disney Plus or movie. You know, uh, HBO Max. The movie theaters aren't really open. The um the malls are open. Um the restaurants you schedule dinners and things like that. You can do that, but still, like no one's really going to the events that they normally were going to. Um the house parties and things like that that people throw now. That's an opportunity to look their best in fashion that they possibly can, or just going to any type of event they can go to. Even some people that are more dressing up, they just go to the grocery store because it's like, I have no place to go, but I have all these clothes from Christmas or my birthday or whatever. I just buy them and I have no way to really wear them. So when I go to the grocery store or go to the laundromat, I'm going to wear whatever, whatever, you know, whatever it is I want to look like. Okay, thank you. So does anyone else would like to add anything about, about how the women's trend is changing post COVID? Yama, would you like to say something? Yes, I would like to say something. And uh, I'm uh, uh, here in Atlanta, I see some changes because uh, right now we see the African print is getting a big place in uh, the fashion industry. And people are starting to wear more African prints into different events, graduation, parties, because I get a lot of uh, customers who have like wedding or, or graduation parties or some uh, uh, evening event, they, they ask for evening wear that is in African print, uh, so elegantly or is not like uh, uh, in African culture where you wear a lot of white stuff, they sew it in a sexy way. Uh, most of it, you can use the same design that you use in order that you sew the other fab uh, prints, the other fabric to do uh, evening wear or short dresses, skirt, pants, and go out. So that is really is taking place in, in the fashion industry a lot. So, and, so, Yama, uh, besides, so Yama, you, you, meant, you mentioned earlier that you were looking for partners for production. 
Is that something that you're yes. looking for? Yeah. So I'm more looking for uh, manufacturers. Okay. So I'm more looking for manufacturers to be able to, to mass products few of my uh, designs and to be able to, to sell more on website. Because right now uh, my community is not that large because I'm one person who doing everything. So it's hard for me to cover uh, all the needs of the customers. Some people go to my website, they wanna buy online. I, I wanna go in internationally, but I cannot cover it for now. I got uh, people asking me uh, in different countries for my products, but if I cannot manufacture a few things, or find people to work with, it will be hard for me to cover all the demands. So, so leave your contact details on the chat box again. And if anyone is a anyone is a manufacturer, please contact Yama. Uh, you know, this is how this is what we do at Fashionably, and we want people to make connections. You know, so I'm just going to move on to Vivian. How are you doing, Vivian? I see you here. How are you? Hi, hello everyone. Can Can you guys hear me well? Yes. yes. Okay, good. So nice to meet all of you. Uh, I'm Vivian Diglio. I'm from London. I'm currently working as a image consulting and I'm here pretty much, uh, you know, to uh, get to know better about the lifestyle B2B and sustainability because I plan to um, restart a brand next year. So that's why you know, I'm just here to listen to, to you guys. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. So you've come to the right place because you're going to see a lot of people who can give you advice and, and, and everything. So just before we get to our, to our speakers for today, I'm going to ask Alka. Alka's from California. How are you doing, Alka? Welcome again. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. How are you doing? I, I'm great. Good to see you guys. And so, uh, excited to be here today. So so, you know, you've got, you've got a lot of experience, you know, you've been in the business so many years. So what do you, you know, and, and, and you have a brand and you're based in California, you, you know, you've seen, you've seen ups, you've seen downs, you've seen everything. So what are you seeing with trends towards women's wear right now? What is, what is in the market? What's hot? What's happening? Give us, give us a little idea of the pulse in, in, in your side of the world. Okay. So, uh, you know, um, first of all, my heart goes out to India and all the support and all the people out there. I wish I could do something more. I could help without that. But I hope you guys are all safe and healthy. And really, we talk about India every day, every day to our factories. And we really wish we could do more to help. Yeah. So anyone who is from India, please remember, <laughs> we all are here, you know, to help. Uh, now coming back to the brand. So we are a, a brand based out of US called Tolani. Um, that's my last name. Alka is my first name. And um, so we founded our company about 17 years back and we kind of, uh, uh, we sell the, the high-end boutiques. Of course we have, we also sell the mainstream market. We change fabrication under, you know, Tolani collection. We'll sell to our television channel or catalog companies or the mom and pop shops, of course, we'll, you know. So a product is made in silk for the most part, but now because there's a big shift in the demand right, from the consumer. I mean, you don't want things to be too expensive. You want more, um, you know, especially after the COVID where everyone was buying cheap, you know, everything in the department of stores was at half off and uh, you're looking at different fabrication. So we have diverted our brand into more different fabrications and we sell under different brands, Tulani Collection or Matila or, um, you know, or Feathers by Tulani. But Tulani is the, the elevated brand. And we find a big shift in what the market needs are here. Now, people who have been living at home for one and a half years were buying soft, you know, loungy products. Now they're looking for happy, joyous colors in very fun, flowy silhouettes. So you're looking at like, you know, almost looks like tie dye is a big trend right now, but the colors have to be very happy. So you're out of your home and now, of course, in US, you know, 75% of people are currently vaccinated. You are looking at, you know, a small percentage who don't want to be vaccinated, but by July, everyone will be vaccinated in US, including, of course, everyone who wants to be vaccinated and kids also. So, um, uh, so you know, of course, he here it's the things are opening up by they're saying by 15th of June, there'll be a no mask mandate. So if you don't want to wear a mask, you're okay with it inside or outside. 
So we are slowly, you know, uh, kind of moving towards normalcy. But this whole year, you'll still be wearing transitional product, which is soft and yet trendy. So you're not home all day, right? So you're going to be wearing something that you will be inside the house and going outside or everyone's traveling this summer domestically. Everyone is traveling. The hotels are full. I mean, you go to a restaurant today, you're going to be crazy out here. It's like hard to find space nowadays because everyone is out, you know? So everyone's buying fashionable products, happy products, the full in soft, flowy silhouettes. And uh, I mean, I can see our demand, February onward, the demand for our product went up too because we were more fashion-driven product. We are not very, you know, knit-driven kind of a product. So we saw a shift in February. So you will see that shift, you know, so, going forward. Akka, where are you producing more of your, of, your, of your women's wear? Where is it being produced? You know, right now we're producing everything in India. Okay. You know, uh, so of course we do want to, you know, take some product to Vietnam, but, you know, India is our hub. Like I'm Indian. I was born and raised there. I've been here for 30 plus years, but um, it's easy for me to communicate. I talk Hindi and, you know, it's very, you can work around, you know, so India, and I'm comfortable working there. I go, I used to go there four times a year. Now, of course, I haven't been there. Um, and uh, so we always look for new factories. factories so what is the process? Like if, some, if someone has a factory right now and would like to work with you, just because like, obviously you're a, you're a buyer, you've got good volumes. So what do they need to do? How do they, how do they need to start? Do they need to send you samples? Or, or how, what, what is the way, like, you, you, what is the process you would, you would right. suggest? Yeah, so first we kind of talk to the factory, right? One-on-one, -on -one, we kind of have a sort of a chemistry going and then we, uh, we always, I always ask them to break ground. Why don't you pick up like 10, 15 of your best styles and just throw me images so I know what the breaking point is. So in a sense, I know where to start off from, right? So whether you embroidery or print or a combination of both, and then I kind of have an idea of what they can do and what they're capable of doing. And then on, I send bodies and with spec charts from here and I tell them, why don't you just, you know, like now that everything's on Zoom or FaceTime, we kind of talk together and kind of build some sort of a package together. So it's uh, very Tolanified, like for our brand, it's very contemporary. We Tolanify the product and then we start developing. So it's, it's not rocket scientist. It's pretty, very achievable, you know, now remotely also. So I frankly going to India four times a year. Now I don't even think I'll have to go. Yeah. More than yeah, yeah. It's, it's getting it's getting so convenient. So Alka, we're going to get back to you in, in a second. Kriya, I just saw you. I saw you nodding at a few things. Uh, uh, Alka was saying. So would you like to tell us more about yourself, Kriya? Kriya is Elena. Is okay. me? Hi, hi. How are you? Hi. <laughs> um, fine. My name is Elena Romero. I'm from Spain, and um, I'm a print designer. Um, and um, I'm just um, doing print with uh, bright colors and happy prints, uh, like somebody says. And um, I'm pretty much uh, waiting for the market to be again um, established because I think uh, during this year, um, the manufacturers uh, used what they have and recolor it and all these kind of things. So, and also uh, we couldn't go to the to the fairs. We couldn't go to Paris. We couldn't go to London. So everything was online, and um, I think it's not the same. But I uh, used this time to have a very good online shop where I have all my prints. So I kind of, uh, it's gonna be easy for me to have international uh, sales, uh, but I, I really want to travel again and in, you know, be able to go to the so, fair. So back, back to prints. Do that people is going to go. What? So, so what? Back, to, back to prints, like, like what you do. Can you give us some idea of the trends what what are what is hot right now with women's wear specifically for women's wear? Okay, like somebody says, uh, I think uh, the tie dye and the shibori is always you know it's it working it's working very good. 
always uh, like always the the flowers, uh, which give you you know the imagine that you're going out and uh, you um, go on the nature, you know, because we've been so all the time at home and working from home. So I think uh, to have um, like, um, you know, bright colors, flowers, nature, and um, also something soft and um, like um, pastel colors, um and uh, i don't know what what else can i so, so can you can you give us some idea of the design process how does it work do you work completely on like cad or what software do you work on and and these prints do you sell them to the fact to the fabric mills or the do you sell it to brands uh, okay i i i design digital and also I paint uh, watercolors and uh, also, um, um, for example. By, by the way, I love, I love your studio. I love your studio. It looks, it looks lovely. The energy, Thank you. Here, it looks, it looks, and I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people will agree with me on this. Thank you. Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, then see, I draw by home, by hand. I do watercolor painting also, but also I use my iPad to, uh, to design because uh, some people won't uh, love the watercolors and the handmade, but uh, the digital uh, drawing gives you the, the, it's easy to separate the colors. And uh, so I, I do all my designs uh, on repeat separate by colors and uh, so the the manufacturer can uh, is ready to use can change color and uh, from a design uh, you can have different uh, prints or different uh, um, prints by colors I mean and um, I um, I send uh, for I, I sell for for example my clients are people that are do the fabrics or they do the final products. They do swim, uh, swimwear or pajamas or women's wear. So everything that can be print, everything that can have a print on it. And now uh, with digital printing right now, you can almost put a print almost on everything, even shoes and uh, I mean the leather, whatever you want. So wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing and, and leave your contact details yeah. because I feel there's can be a lot of synergy with people. So I'm just going to get to some of our other audience uh, uh, also. Design to fashion, how are you doing? Good, thank you. And thank you for the invite. Thank you. So tell us where are you, where are you based? So I'm based in Denver, Colorado. Okay, wonderful. And tell us more about what you I'm do. I, I'm initially from England, so I'm a bit of a transplant over here. So okay, excuse the British on here if my accent is not quite straight. No worries. Always, it's it's great because we have so many people here from all parts of the world, which is great. So tell us. Tell I us see more. that this is great. So tell us more about what you do. Um. So okay. So what I do is mostly technical fashion design. So I'll take the ideas from a designer. And I'm the person they'll come to to fill in all of the technical details, the pattern making, the grading, making sure the sizing is right. So what do, what do you, like for women's wear usually, now give us an idea, what is, a, what is the standard sizing? What are the sizing that you would look at specifically for the, obviously in the UK is different, America is different. So you do, you do the grading as well? I do the grading as well. And I actually prefer to do the grading on some of the garments I do because it's easier to get the sizing right through all the sizes if I have control over that whole section. And so instead so of, you know, filling out a grade chart and letting somebody else decide quite where those changes are supposed to fit. You know, there's so many different ways of grading a pattern okay, off wonderful. one grade chart. And sometimes, you know, I know where I'm trying to go and I know what the client wants. It's easier for me to do those. 
Um, a lot of the things I do, sometimes I'm contracting with factories overseas, sometimes I'm working with local factories on behalf of a designer. I'm often the third person in that conversation, making sure that the factory has the technical details they need from the designer that the designer can't necessarily answer as a question. So when there's technical questions that come back, I'll step in and I'll say, okay, this is what you're trying to do. Wonderful. So just to help those designers make sure that the process is streamlined. I'm also looking with a uh, potential business partner at starting up a small, a small batch factory right here in Colorado. So. Uh, okay, wonderful. We've been, so so when, when we've been I, running into issues with some of the very complex, very origami style high end garments where no factories will take them. Today you're in a webinar where I can see a lot of factories over here. So why don't you like put some of the information of what you would like to be made or, and your contact details so people can contact you, you know, I think that would be very helpful. Absolutely. You know. And thank you yeah, so it's, much. It's interesting to see the movement in the United States right now because there's a lot of people who are starting and wanting to start the process locally. But it's been an interesting dynamic. Ever since the pandemic started, people suddenly realized they watched us scrambling to make masks because we didn't have any supplies coming from overseas. And now everybody's rethinking the supply chain. So so, so when you look for a factory, like just for example, when you look for an overseas factory, what are the, like, what, two questions I have to ask you. The first is, what is it that, mm -hmm. what do you, what do you look for in a factory? Like what attracts you to work with a specific factory? And the second thing is, what are you seeing as trends in women's wear uh, post COVID? Um, what to look for in a factory? Um, generally, it's just, you know, if somebody's above board on a factory, and they get sent a file, they don't, you know, it's too complicated or, you know, lots of pieces. It's like that 3D puzzle. If it's too hard to put together, if the factory comes right back and says, help me do this because I can't quite see how this works, I call that a good sign. <laughs> a factory who sits back, tries it, sends me something that doesn't work, but doesn't ask any questions to me, That'll tell me to, you know, usually pay more attention to the one who did ask questions. Okay, thank you. And what, what, since, since you've seen the technical side, what are your, what do you think are the trends with women's wear? What do you see happening in the market? And what do you think that's hot right now? What do you think that is going to be the next big thing? Ooh, this is a tough one. And I think I agree with some of the other ladies here, there's definitely a movement towards colors, towards, you know, comfort clothes. We're still not entirely ready to leave home and go back to work, but we've also got used to working in things that are comfortable. So those softer fabrics, you know, and I, I've got a few ideas that I've been thinking of for myself where, you know, maybe taking softer fabrics and doing more high-end looks, but with something that feels comfortable, but doesn't look so, like it feels like loungewear. Yeah. So that we get that feeling of being dressed up again, but we're still comfortable because we've gotten used to being comfortable. Yeah, that's, what's, that's what the trend is. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. So just getting to some of our other people, Jade, how are you doing, Jade? Hi, where are you? Can you tell us more about <laughs> where you where are you based? Uh, I'm actually based in Scotland in Aberdeen, but I'm originally from England. Um, I'll apologize real quick. I have a parrot in the background. He's a bit noisy. You'll probably hear him through the mic. So just a quick <laughs> disclaimer right there. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, so tell us more. Are you, so what, what? Tell us more about what you do. So um, I'm actually, I'm a recent grad from university. Um, this is my first business that I'm reaching out, launching, going all out. Um, I hand paint and illustrate all my own work and I get it printed onto organic fabric um, and I sew them all myself and create my own patterns. Um, basically, I'm a business that's promoting sustainability in fashion and design. So I'm really trying to go out and use organic cottons. I use cork. Um, I use silk, so I'm not going vegan just yet, but this is something that I might have to branch into. I know that's quite a popular thing. So I'm really going and pushing myself. This is all new to me. I'm 
I'm on baby steps at the moment, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. So any trends that you see in, 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 in Scotland right now with women's wear, anything that you want to share, what's hot, what, what's, what's happening in the market? Um, it's quite interesting because a lot of people, they're still into their masks. I mean, it's, it's one of those, I don't do masks. And um, I still, I probably won't. It's it's one of those things. that's still quite a a funny topic up here. But I suppose the the latest trend that I've seen at the moment has come to be um, different skirts. Actually, people are pulling out skirts out of nowhere for women's wear mostly. Um, this isn't something that a lot of people would wear, but long like maxi skirts. I think we lost you. That's something that I was quite taken about. You lose me there. Yeah, yeah. You're back now. Uh, yeah, there we go. Sorry, my internet. <laughs> um, yeah, I was saying that um, headbands, they're quite a big thing here at the moment. I don't know where it came from, but um, headbands and scrunchies were going back. <laughs> so backwards in style all over again for whatever reason. But this is... This is just it, isn't it? Goes in circles. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. So I'm just moving to some of our other people, the Joburg uh, pattern maker. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? And and uh, so tell us more about where you're based and, and what you do and some trends that you're seeing in the women's wear right now. So my name is Silva. I'm based in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, I am a pattern maker and I have my own clothing brand. It's differently.co.za. Um, so my clothing brand, we focus a lot on global trends because South Africans, we love following global trends, but with my brand, I cater it more towards the South African consumer who's still quite conservative compared to the rest of the world. Um, and then with my pattern making business, I do pattern making and consultations for up and coming designers as well. Um, and this year I'm actually starting my own clothing manufacturing business as well on top of that. Oh, wa wonderful, wonderful. And, and what are the trends that you're seeing in, in, in your country right now? What are the things that you're seeing with women's wear? What are, what are, what are, what are like trends, anything that's hot right now that you'd like to share to other people? So, um, again, a lot of um, leisure wear, leisure sets, um, everyone's wearing. Um, again, we cat we're trying to just catch on to um, global trends um, at leisure as well. Um, one of our big retailers in South Africa, it's called Mr. Price, so it's similar to like Primark, very um, affordable clothing. They kind of did a skims knockoff collection and that was very popular so yeah just also we're in winter at the moment so um all, all of the the winter wear trends yeah thank you thank you so much for sharing so just getting to sophia davis sophia are you here i sophia. am here hi how are you I am doing well. Hello, everyone. Everyone looks amazing. Tell us what's tell us what's hot hot in New York right now, because that's what everybody wants to know. Well, first of all, it's eighty five degrees over here, so that's fabulous. We're not used to this heat yet. It usually comes later, but it's eighty about eighty five degrees, eighty eighty five, and I think I heard someone saying that um, people, you know, are coming out with, um, you know still want to be like comfortable here. I'm in the fashion industry for so many years. The people I'm talking to, they're ready to get dressed up and go somewhere. They don't care where they just want to get dressed up because they are so tired of being with the slouchy clothes. So they want to get dressed up and just go out. I have friends that are going like to restaurants just to eat in gowns and like elegance because they haven't had a chance to wear these clothes for a year or so. So a lot of things is happening in New York City. Uh, we open up to the public with no masks tomorrow. So 
everything's back to almost 100%. There are some stores that still require a mask, but most, and by law, you don't have to wear it uh, unless you're on the bus or the train. So this is one of the good things that are happening and people are really coming alive. That, you know, Fashion Week is happening in person. So it's not virtual. So this is wow, another wow. good thing that everybody was waiting for. Yeah, in-person Fashion Week is actually going to happen in September. So if anybody does Fashion Week, you, you better start booking your flight so you can come on over and uh, enjoy yourself uh, because everything's going to be open. Everything is opening up. So uh, that's what's happening here in New York City. So uh, any questions, I'm happy to answer if I can. Thank you so much. You know, because every uh, everyone, like I mentioned, I keep mentioning this all the time, but everyone keeps telling me the same thing that they want to grow their business in America. And New York's been very good. It's it, During the pandemic, it was one of the only markets that were really, really, uh, you know, pulling through and placing orders with companies and factories around the world. So I'm going to move to one of our, uh, Sophia, thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to move to one of our, um, uh, one of our panelists over here, John. John is a very experienced uh, uh, fashionista and he is, uh, he's, he's worked with Guest Jeans and he knows everything about the business. So John, would you like to talk to us? Tell us, what do you see as women's wear trends in the market? John, are you there? John, you have to unmute. I think you're unmuted. Just going to wait for one second, John. Are you there? Okay, we'll come back to you then. So, um, so now moving, moving to uh, just one before we move to our uh, before we move to our uh, special guest for the evening. I see Ariella. How are you doing? Hi, I'm I'm, I'm doing okay. Thank you. So where, where are you based? Thank you for for inviting. I'm based in London here in the UK. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, I'm working as a branding and marketing strategist. Um, that especially um, that are more specialized with the fashion and the beauty uh, in industry. And yeah, and then I, and then I and during this uh, last months uh, with the COVID change have me change uh, the the things have been changed quite a lot especially with uh, when it comes to the trends and also the people's behavior, then obviously that's also impact with the, with the fashion in industry as well with the design and stuff. Okay, what, what, and any trends that you see, anything that you wanna share with women's wear, something that you like or something that you think is hot that you're seeing in the industry? Yes, I think so. I think the the trend of the 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 sustainability that's one of the, I would say that's one of the most trending uh, topics because I think the everybody is, is like a, is is more at home and they they start to we all of us I think we start to realize how how quite important it is to be more sustainable and also how our, our behavior can affect like the environment yeah i think that's more like the comfort with uh, the nice materials natural materials and then that can also can last in longer thank you thank you so much for uh, for, uh, for sharing so just getting to uh, i see um i do i do the dress i do how are you good thank you so hi, so can you tell us where you're based and a little bit about what your company? I am in Texas, in the States. Wonderful, and so are you, are you only doing bridal or are you doing all I kinds do of- bridal. Okay. Only bridal, and we, we, we do quite a bit of wholesale also. So I have several people that I work with in wholesale. So I'm interested in more of the bridal and looking for more factories that are, are opening up now. We're having a lot of problems with delivery for bridal. Myanmar so, obviously is having issues and 
other countries are having issues with delivery. So we're always looking for new up and coming, more sustainable bridal. Obviously bridal is not the most sustainable. It's a one-time wear situation, but uh, we, we, we're always looking for wholesale situations and bridal across the world. Wonderful. So, uh, Accessories so, and so leave your, leave your contact details. And if anybody uh, is, is, is doing bridal or are you looking for embroidery or are you looking for full, full garment manufacturing? Embroidery, the Mexican bright flowers embroidery type is super popular right now. It, it comes and goes every six to 10 years, but right now it's just super hot. So I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, the really bright flower kind of embroidery and, you know, retail, <clears throat> excuse me, retail on those range from 1500 to 4,000, depending on the embroidery. And it's just not, it's not acceptable. It's not accessible for most brides in the States. Um, we, we literally look for more bu budget bridal that we're trying to keep our price points under 2000. Under 2000, is that, uh, is that, is that your retail? Is that your retail pricing? That's my retail. That is my retail business. My wholesale business is separate. Okay, so one, so you know, we we actually have a separate webinar focused on bridal. It actually just got over a few weeks ago, oh, but, we have, but we have another one happening in June. So uh, it'd be a pleasure to have you at, at okay. the bridal one. And it's, it's very interesting because it's very focused. Today, again, it's just focused on women's wear, you know, just general women's wear. Right. And we're just going to get to some of our, uh, thank you again. And we're going to get to some of our other panelists uh, before you. we before we get to our no special problem. guests for the evening. So I see Ar Arakel Fashion. How are you? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, how are Arabella you? From, um, Ar Good. Yes. Um, I'm uh, actually right now in London uh, in quarantine, <laughs> quarantine hotel, but I'm based in Ethiopia. So um, where I have, uh, I, I created a, um, a, a school for, uh, to learn sewing and fashion, and we're also doing production. So we started in 2014. So it's Eric Haley, Fashion Design College and Garment Production. Wonderful. And where, where are you based in Utopia? Uh, Addis Ababa. Okay, wonderful. Because I keep hearing there's a huge fashion hub over there and it's, 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 it's yes. going. Yeah, yeah. It really is. I mean, for years, um, you know, you would buy leather bags in Italy and uh, the same with coffee. Ethiopia was not very good at, um, you know, maximizing its potential in, in branding. So, um, you know, but, but most of the leather bags in Italy, the leather actually came from Ethiopia. So all, all that is a, is a big change now in the last five years, it's very much made in Ethiopia using, um, you know, cotton and silk um, and definitely towards um, sustainable clothing and ethical conditions because a lot of factories have now moved to Ethiopia. Um, and that's, you know, that's a concern uh, is, to, is to keep the, the price that the, the wages right so with, with women, because there is no there is no minimum wage for instance the government doesn't have that so it's up to you as a company to um to have an ethical standard and pay your your employees well and so on no i think i think what you're doing is fabulous and and and, and you know really that's something great that you're doing and just can you tell us something about women's wear some of the trends that you're seeing maybe with your clients some of the production that's happening uh, and, and you know any any kind of ideas Yes, well, um, we, we wanted to uh, only produce uh, items of clothing um, from Ethiopian fabrics. So um, it's obviously cotton and, um, and silk is becoming a, a new thing. Um, but they, there's still a lot of materials, you know, that come in from Turkey and China. So it's, um, and Ethiopia, I don't know if you know about the traditional clothing in Ethiopia, it's the shimmery white cotton. It's called Nutella. And so you have dresses um, and, and shawls and scarves with beautiful embro hand embroidered borders. So uh, that's the traditional fashion in Ethiopia. But now um, there's a lot of fusion fashion. A lot of African prints are being imported and they're being you know, used. The, 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 the big designers are doing that. But we, we did um, very well with masks, I have to say, from the sort of uh, cotton and the, the, the Jersey type cotton. Um, but the fashion trend is definitely fusion fashion. Um, 
It's, uh, you know, keeping the tradition of the white Nutella and what, what stands out as, as uniquely Ethiopian, but um, adding African prints and um, silk and, you know, different, different things like that. But long flowing dresses, wide pants, um, that sort of thing. Well, so. Wonderful, thank you. Zemzem, would you like, thank you so much. Zemzem, would you like to add something? Uh, I was just uh, uh, having some notes and I totally agree like uh, um, like with my clientele like this season we were focusing very much on luxury hotels like resort hotels and um, it, there was a really big shift like I even saw women getting more out of their femininity like having comfortable tights but also you know um, um, comfortable fabrics, but also very flattery, long mm -hmm. dresses. They are, you know, can like embrace and just like be free and linen, cotton, silk. Um, at one side, uh, luxurious, hand-woven, uh, organic linen, cotton, silk, uh, very yeah. much on my uh, sophisticated clientele. They were still like looking for the uh, luxury and the merge with sustainability. But on the other hand, very oversized um, 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 crop, uh, like crop tops and, uh, and shirts where they can combine it with their tights and have their like little yoga top going on. And then they put their comfortable shirts and a belt and then go outside to buy some stuff, go back home and do their yoga, taking off, like very versatile, very flexible, very like um, also like liberating, you know? And that was very interesting for me too, as a designer and as someone who's uh, trying to, you know, like find the optimum to give for uh, uh, my customers to feel comfortable, to be seen sexy and still not like squeezed in. So that was very much a challenge and um, um, Lo yeah. Lovely, so. lovely to see your passion. You, you, you're so passionate when you speak, you know, it's, it's, it's lovely to see how, and I can, I can see your passion when you're talking and it's, it's, it's wonderful. I can see you're really into, you're really into what you're doing and that's, that's what yeah. makes, yeah. Yeah, it's important because like, not just as a business person, as a woman, I mean, um, being a designer, we, I have the power to influence. I have the power to put out my values and uh, change with what I'm doing. So I, I, I have joy with what I'm doing. It doesn't matter how the circumstances are out there. And it was for every one of us very challenging to reinvent and to see that everything, like everything is going to be more um, 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 virtual and social media and so much new things, but still you have to always take a step back and go back onto your core values. What do I want to deliver? And um, that is, um, yeah, what I'm about. And uh, thank, yes, thank you, and thank, thank you so much for, sh for sharing. <laughs> yeah, you, Asvika, you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, I find like her values and uh, uh, the values that we stand like, you know, we are kind of similar. But how do you overcome your competition, uh, competition, uh, your competitors, especially in the fast current fashion industry and so much uh, brands out there? So how how do you? put yourself in a position to stand out amongst the uh, other other brands or how do you meet your competitions? Is that a question to me? Yes, that's a question. Oh, okay, um, you know, that's uh, that has a lot to do with also like um, learning to know where your own capacities are. Like I'm saying, if I have this vision, which is not mainstream, I really stopped to compare, but still look what's going on outside. Like I did today the introduction with uh, that we have uh, established us among luxury brands and Zemzem Atelier is not a brand uh, like Gucci, but still I have to be confident and put out the quality that I'm delivering. And of course, this is nothing that um, that happens overnight. It's a what, journey. What are, your, what, are your me, what are your price points? Sorry, Intrap, what are your, because we just got short of time. We're short of time. So we just have to get maximum things oh. happening. So what is, what is, what are your price points? Like average, like let's say uh, address. We, first I have to say everything is handcrafted. 
and uh, social sustainable, like, uh, you know, the crafters, my ladies who are crafting, my designs are uh, really uh, well paid for their skills. And um, so like you can get a dress starting uh, from $200 and you can get a dress also, it depends on if it's hand woven silk, if it's a single piece, if it's a custom made, uh, it's starting with 200 and goes up to $1,500. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for uh, sharing. Uh, leave your contact details on, on the chat. Uh, so, so you know, we can, we can, uh, other people can connect with you. Now we're going to get to one of our guests for the evening, uh, Ankita Bagaria. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm good. So, tell us more about your company and a little bit about your journey towards women's wear. So, uh, I started in uh, 2018. I got married in 2018, and I, uh, I'm a Delhiite. I come from the capital city of India. And I've moved to the cultural centric city of India, that's Jaipur. And um, I've, I've always wanted to do something in sustainability. I've myself been a sustainable advocate. And I started my brand um, by the name of Aru Shop India. And uh, the USP of the brand is that we use fabrics that are 100% organic. Uh, uh, the fabrics are hand woven. It's all done by hand. Um, we are trying to put sustainability, like everybody has mentioned, that it's something that's a way of life. Uh, we're trying to do uh, our, our packaging is plastic free. Uh, the the branding, that's the label, the tags, everything is done from uh, seedable paper. So that because what happens that when we when we purchase a dress or or anything from from a shop, we end up cutting the tags and throwing it in the dustbin. So um, when you start to think of it, uh, we, we've done it in a seedable paper so that you can just sew it and you'll, you'll have plants coming out of it. So all our branding is done. Even our business cards are done from the seedable paper tag. Our mailers are done from a compostable material that's water soluble because often we are 80% uh, we are, uh, an online brand and we don't have a store of our own. Uh, we are supplying to multi-brand stores. So we end up doing our um, mailer bags also that are 100% sustainable. So this is something that uh, you, we, lo we often end up seeing is that the brand is sustainable, but you end up using plastic or doing something that's, that's not matching to the um, ethos that you want to follow. And um, another thing I would like to add is that um, we are, we are on the road. I would say that there might be something that we might be missing, but this is something that we constantly keep improvising in our brand. We started to use a co a buttons made out of coconut. Uh, the fabrics that we use are made out of um, banana fabric, organic banana. They are they're made, made out of waste of uh, soya, soya bean. Uh, it's a, it's, it's, again, it's a um, plant. Uh, we use, uh, we make fabric out of the waste of um, uh, bamboo. That's again, uh, that, that's a waste, waste part of the plant. And we're also trying to uh, use a recycled um, bit of uh, chiffon. That's a global recycled chiffon. It's, it's, it's a certified fabric and it gives you the same texture as a chiffon does. It's skin friendly again. Uh, and obviously when you end up wearing it, then, then you have that sense that, you know, uh, if we've invested that much money, we, we're actually uh, not, we, we're uh, giving us as well as we're giving back to our, our planet. So, so, do, uh, so do you, consumers do you, want to buy something? No, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just want to know, do you manufacture for other brands as well? Or is it, are you only doing your own brand? Yes, we manufacture for other brands as well. Um, one thing is that um, we, we do our in-house printing also for brands. Uh, we, we've done for uh, brands in the past from Australia and UK as well as um, parts of USA. But the one thing that we, we, we are mostly clear is that, you know, if anything that we try to do has to be sustainable from the bag that we pack it into and the, um, the process that we use. So, because the idea of using fabrics, this fab these fabrics are something that are so new. 
for somebody to um, understand and obviously costings are a little high because it's it's a labor intensive job that's done so you know uh, one thing is i've not you said you're based in jaipur right yes so i mean jaipur is 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 a real hub for fashion and i think that you being there you got access to like yeah. printing i mean you you got you got more access to raw materials and fabrics than most most people out here you know so uh, i'm just Absolutely. just want to get to some of the other audience members if anyone's looking for production small production run sustainable contact ankita she can work with you ankita leave your contact details you know so um you know anyone can and yeah. does anyone have any questions from ankita does anyone would like anyone ask would anyone want to ask anything uh, jade was that your hand was that your hand up there do you do um do you do like printed seeded paper for as well and like custom sort of stuff like that because it's something I found really difficult to find here in Scotland. Um, I've been wanting to do a lot of um, uh, business cards with seeded papers and stuff like that but finding yeah. it here is incredibly difficult. No, we, we, we do all of that here. We, we can do it. It's just that um, the, the lower the quantity is, the higher uh, the oh, pricing is, because um, it, it's yet, all done made to order. Anything that we do, even for our brand, it's it's a slow fashion. That's why we advocate slow fashion. We do seedable tags, the, the soluble um, mailers that I'm telling you about. Uh, we supply, we are, we are a part of an online um, sustainable platform from Switzerland. And um, we've got a tremendous response and we actually get emails from our customers from Switzerland telling us that the, the bags that you've sent in are incredible. So this is something that, uh, it's, it's a new concept, but I, I'm so glad that, you know, uh, people are uh, appreciating it and uh, encouraging and they want to reuse it. So yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions for Ankita? Um, anyone looking for any production, small runs? Uh, please, please be feel free to contact yeah. her. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, please. Hi, hi. Um, yeah, hi, Ankita. Um, ha hope you're well. I just wanted to know what kind of clothing that you um, manufacture. So, do you do like occasion wear, or what kind of what kind of products are you able to help manufacture? So, uh, Rekha, currently in our brand that we're doing, uh, we are we are focusing on Western wear, but it's more of casual and travel wear. Okay, sure. Uh, we're doing more of prints, um, summery prints, uh, because um, and and our winter collection is is kind of knitwear that's again done all by hand. Uh, okay. We're right now focusing at the at the travel. Um, basically, it's a very travel centric collection that sure. we've done. Because I'm trying to launch um, an occasion where like women's wear brand, so it's got a lot of embroidery and like luxury fabrics. Is that not really something that you can kind of um, that you specialize in? Yeah, Rekha, yeah. Leave, your, leave your contact details on the chat, you know, sure. leave it on the chat because a lot of other people can contact Ankita. Please, I'm sorry I cut you off. Please go ahead. Okay, yeah, no, yeah, I was just um, I just wanted to um, say this that of course, since we are from Jaipur. Uh, another concept that we've seen uh, people uh, people have appreciated is that we we can do tie and dye and bandage all on organic fabrics on organic linen or organic cotton or uh, the lining that we use that that's organic as well as the fabric so if you tell somebody that the tie and dye that we've done is on um is on a fabric like the fabric uh, that's made out of orange orange fruit Mm -hmm. uh, it, it beats the luster that silk gives you. So this oh, is okay. something that's completely new. So we, but do you do like much embroidery and stuff or is it more like yeah, printing? Yeah, we do and, custom do do? but okay. yeah, again, uh, matching the sustainable, sustainable yeah. aspect for embroideries gets a little tough because yeah, we can yeah. recycle the products. But now due to COVID here in lockdown, travel is completely barred. So we're just trying to do what we can from our um, from our space. Like we we're not sure. moving right now. But yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to you. Maybe you can send some examples of your work, and like we can chat. Sure. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank you. Thank. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So now, just moving to another of our guests, uh, Shriya Bharti. Shriya is also. Before then, I would like to ask a question. No, oh, please, please. Okay. Sorry, Shriya. Uh, I would like to know if she uh, manufacture like 
African print clothing as well is or it's or somebody else is doing it. Yeah, we can do that, Yama. Okay. Thank you. I'll reach out to you. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So uh, just just to make just to tell people, um, uh, Ankita is based in Jaipur, which is a, a big hub for fashion. You know, they've got ancient techniques. Uh, they do block printing, all kinds of things, which are which cannot be done in other parts of the world because many of these techniques are from father to son and generations, which are only done in that area. So it's good. I mean, uh, it, it's interesting to connect with her. You know, if anyone needs anything, please go ahead and connect with Ankita. Now, just move. Uh, just moving to. Some of our other our other special guests. I see Shriya Bharti. How are you? Welcome. Hi. Good evening. I've actually uh, it's been a great seminar. So uh, I'll give a little brief about myself. My name is Shriya. My company's name is Draz Impex. We've been working for 17 years now, and I'm a graduate from Pearl Academy, which is the premium institute of uh, India. After which I have done my internship with Next UK before I started my own factory. Uh, we've delved into everything. I would say I'm a buyer's delight because for me, even if somebody comes up with 10 pieces or 1,000 pieces, they're most welcome. Uh, we've delved oh. into everything in women and kids wear. Uh, from everything we've done, occasion wear for people in Afghanistan. We've done high street fashion for uh, buyers, multi-chain stores in Mexico. We've done private label manufacturing for people with embroidery, little embroidery. Uh, tunics, kaftans, uh, we've done our speciality scarves. So we do a lot of manufacturing of scarves in handloom, in pure silks where you, we do rolled hems, we do a lot of variety. So uh, my reason to join the webinar as Tarun invited me, I would like to thank you is that I would want to extend my manufacturing services to anybody who's looking to get their production done in India. Uh, we work with people with the African prince, I've actually, I would want to say hi to Alka because I just happened to email her one, one hour back and she just said exactly what I have written in the email is like that, would you want to see pictures? So I had the biggest smile on my face when she came on screen because this is exactly what I've emailed her. So um, we can manufacture as per your price points, you can tell us and my USP as a designer and a manufacturer is I will always guide you the right way. Suppose if you're choosing a fabric and I feel that, okay, this may not work. I would like to guide you so that you don't lose your money and you don't lose everything that comes forth with the shipment, with everything, your time, my time. It's better to be an honest supplier. But that's how I like it. And can you, can I you always tell everybody- Can you do small quantities? Yes, it's fine. We Because right now, even with the pandemic, I've, we've gone from 500 pieces and 1,000 pieces to 50 pieces. And we still appreciate our buyers because I know this time is going to pass. So I would like to say anybody who wants to get their manufacturing done, be it a small quantity, they can get in touch with me. In my best capacity, what I can guide them, I will definitely do so. And I will tell them the right way forward. I'm not going to misguide for just getting the production done. That's not how it is. We have great bank of swatches of embroidery, fabric, all over India. We're working with weavers. So there is a good data bank. You can get in touch with me and we can start small where you have faith and then you can take it forward to bigger quantities for sure. Because I know we have to prove ourselves as manufacturers in India. So to any buyer. Leave your contact I think that's details. how even Tarun feels. Leave your, leave your contact details uh, on, on the chat. Does anyone have any questions for Shriya? Would anyone want to ask her anything before we, before we move to someone else? Yes. Shriya, where are you located? I'm located in New Delhi. Oh, great. Where? Where in New Delhi? Uh, uh, New Delhi, my registered office is in ITO. My factory is in Noida, Sector 6. Oh. Will you yeah. get in touch with me? I just got in touch with you and I wrote exactly what you asked right now that I would okay. want to see pictures. So I actually said that, do you want to see pictures? If you just go back to the email, it's there for me. I want to see pictures okay. too. <laughs> um, Shreya, Shreya, what Sorry. kind of um, what kind of clothing do you manufacture? Like, uh, what, yeah, what kind of clothing? See, we've done, if you want to get a gown manufactured with uh, embellishments, we have embroidery samples to show you. You can show me your uh, swatches. Your pictures, we'll develop them for you. We'll make a dummy outfit. We'll do everything. We'll show you everything. You can develop your collection with us. 
Okay, you sure. You can start with one piece. You can start with five pieces, and then we can take it from there. What's your? Do you have you a website or Instagram that I can look up? A website or Instagram? I can show you. I can send you my Instagram. Link. Okay, sure. Thank you. That's for my scarf, but it has a lot of my private label work as well. Okay. Yeah. So I'm. Um, thank you so much. Just going to get to some of our other audience members. Uh, good, good brands. How are you doing, sir? Good brands. Would you like to unmute? Hi. Uh, you have to unmute. You have to unmute. Okay. No. No problem. So, uh, Pariah Powell, would you like to say something? No, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, yeah. Okay. No problem. Go ahead. Yeah. So can you tell okay, us more about um, what you do? Yeah, we are a um, we are a um, uh, an, a sustainable uh, agency in in Holland doing the Benelux. We um, we have uh, fifteen brands in our uh, company. Uh, most of them are from Germany, uh, Holland, um, uh, coming from those countries. We are doing Lanius from Germany. We are doing Langerchen from Germany. We're doing Mandala, a um, yoga collection from Germany. Um, we are doing um, in good prints, um, all major important sustainable brands for the Dutch market. We're serving about 500 clients in Holland. And um, we are um, growing very rapidly, although the COVID situation was uh, very uh, nervous last year, of course, and still is. We made a growth uh, this, we're gonna be growing this year about 25%. So we are seeing now in the, in the Netherlands and in the Benelux uh, uh, concerning also Belgium, that our market is opening up and um, we are seeing that the um, sustainable brands, as I know them, and we know a, a, a pretty much a few of them, that they are increasing their turnover, although the recession or COVID situation, they are um, increasing their turnover um, uh, at the moment. So, so, so are, are, the, are you are you are you like when you say you're an agency? Uh, what, what what does that mean? Are you are you looking for? Are you distributing the brands? Or are you managing their production? We we're doing both. So we have uh, pretty much influence in uh, a few of our brands. We are importing also a few brands, um, and we are also doing the. Um, the coordination with the styling uh, for two brands also for our market. Wonderful. Um, any any uh, trends? Any trends that you can share in, in in your market when it comes to women's wear that you're seeing? Well, the, I mean, we're not. We we. I'm not the kind of person who are uh, who is. Um, who is uh, determining the the, 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 the the styling or is, uh, of course, we can tell what we need for our market. And I'm not talking about what I just heard about uh, certain embroideries or whatever. I know I, I, for sure you can do that a, a, a lot better than I can. And you have your expertise in this kind of stuff. What, I, what we are looking for is companies, our brands, uh, when possible, that we can um, that we can sell here in our in our market, and so, um, I, I think that's one. Why don't you leave your leave your contact details? Because I think yeah. there's there's a lot of I see a lot of interesting brands over here that can approach you, and I think that's great. And anything, just tell us like when you look for a brand, what is it that you, what is it that attracts you to a brand that you could tell tell us? You know, what is what is the main thing is that they have. First of all, they gotta have a handwriting. They gotta have a DNA which is clear, transparent, and is, um, let's say, visible. And um, uh, what is important for us is that um, there is an emotional feeling behind the brand or behind the, the company. Um, and if they can transport it to their label, to their brand, uh, that is important for us. Of course, it will have to suit in our market. That's for sure. But um, I think the transparency, the uh, the sustainability, and the openness of the company 
uh, whether it's small or big, that doesn't matter, but has to be clear and open. Uh, I have a question for good brands. Yeah. Are you a distributor uh, in Germany? Mm, for... I would love to because it's a big market also, but uh, we have very good contacts with colleagues there. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions? So I didn't get your name. Uh, what is your name again? Michelle Smith. Michelle. So does anyone have any questions for Michelle? Uh, I believe Marvel, you want to say something? Marvel? You have to unmute. Marvel, are you there? Okay, no problem. So does anyone else yeah, have... Sorry. No, can yeah. you... Okay, hi. Yeah. Please yes. go ahead. Hi. Uh, we are a uh, uh, launcher manufacturer from India, and uh, we like to get in touch with you, sir. Can you please uh, put your email ID and contact number so that we will get in touch with you? Yeah, no problem. No problem. Thank you. Um, I just I just want to tell you because this is this is always kind of interesting because you always meet people all around the globe, it was, which makes it interesting. We started out last year with. Um, People from India know probably this product, uh, copper bottles like this. Wow, that, that's made in Muradabad. That's made in Muradabad, right? Or, I don't know, I don't know. We do this, uh, <laughs> we do this over a company from uh, Munich, from Germany. And um, the lady called me a couple of months ago and she said, Michel, just try it. And I said, I don't, you know, we're not kind of, we're, not, we're in the fashion, we're not in bottles. And uh, I ordered a thousand bottles from her and we sold those bottles in, in, in two days. Um, so what, wow. I wanted, what, what, I, what I wanted to tell you, and now we're doing about 100,000 euros a year with them. Um, but what I wanted to tell you is that our markets are getting closer our markets are getting transparent. Uh, there is, besides fashion, there is not only fashion, but the new shops in the world are gonna be those shops who sell not only fashion, but sell also nice bottles or accessoires or the, whatever the concept, has to the concept. Do with sustainability. A concept store, right. And the only way, and the only thing that is important at the moment that the people who survive are, are putting up these concepts and putting up these new kind of shops because those are the guys who won't lose from the web shops. They, are, they have adventure in their shops. They, have, they are opening uh, new possibilities with their products and are interesting for the people who walk into these shops. And of course, the web shops are also close. Uh, uh, you have to get them also in, but um, this is what we do. We're trying to do new stuff. We're trying to do new ways to get into certain markets and uh, yeah. Michelle, thank you so much. I mean, you shared some really, really useful information and and I, and I please leave your contact details on the chat. I'm oh, sure well. you'll get some great responses from, from, from today and I hope I hope uh, it's beneficial to everyone. So, uh, you know, right. before we get towards our end of our webinar, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about Fashionably In. So we're a trade show uh, platform. We're based in London and um, once again, we're just waiting for uh, everything to calm down so we could so we could start uh, doing our uh, physical events again, you know. But till then, it's all virtual and we're making the most of it. Uh, today is actually our last uh, uh, webinar for this month. And then we're going to do, we're having a three-day virtual festival in June, which is June 12th to 14th. Uh, we're going to have uh, webinars throughout the day, eight webinars, each one focused on a specific uh, topic. So it would be a pleasure to have all of you there uh, um, at our webinar. And uh, today today's was, it was great because we saw so many people from so many different parts uh, of the world, which is really interesting. And just to move uh, to a few more people before we end, because I have a few interesting people that I want to get in. And then thank you all for being here. So I'm just going to ask... Um, uh, sorry, it was Baltimore Design. How are you doing? Baltimore Design. You got to unmute. Baltimore Design, you have to unmute. Okay, no, no problem. So, uh, moving, moving, moving to uh, 
some moving to some of our other people before we end. Pigeon wishes you had uh, you had said something. Hi. Oh, hi. Uh, I think I have been here before. Uh, my name is Frank. Uh, uh, we are UK based sustainable fabric wholesaler and also supplying that stock from uh, designer studios from worldwide. So the, the, you know, something like independent designers, uh, we, we mainly source some kind of a trendy sustainable fabric like uh, tensiles, uh, models, and eco viros. Uh, they all come from uh, Austria. Uh, the company uh, we source is, is called uh, Lensing Group. Uh, so uh, they supply this sustainable fabric and they also get the cellular based fabric from Japan. Uh, so they are like Bimber Krupos and uh, also the trial acetate from uh, Mitsubishi. You know, the, 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 the car company is also doing kind of a textile as well. Uh, yeah, so in, in terms of your questions, uh, I, I, can, I can answer uh, from just ourselves and also uh, in terms of uh, uh, trend uh, sort of uh, uh, switching. So from last year of April to April this year, I think uh, the best selling fabric is kind of a, a neutral color, neutral color and uh, home wear comfortable uh, pajamas, jerseys. So it's, it's stretchy, comfortable people wearing at home and don't need to be that colorful also of course sustainable but uh since april this year uh after several countries have been uh unlocked the the the, the border or the the country uh the trend started to become very i would say diversity so in one part like people are still pursuing kind of a very soft plain colors. Uh, I actually get one fabric here to just show you guys. Uh, this one, uh, I'm not saying, uh, I'm not trying to sell fabric, uh, but just say this color is the, like a uh, cappuccino. You know, the, the, the coffee color uh, is quite plain. And because it's a linen base, linen tensile mix. So it's make it very comfortable and sustainable. So it's very popular right at the moment. And another one is very, very, uh, very interesting is this one is very shiny and people are buying this shiny stuff a lot as well to just go for a drink or uh, go out to eat with other people. Uh, so you would say most of your customers are designers in the UK? Uh, yeah, most of our customers are designer studios uh, like independent dressmakers that uh, they basically uh, make dress on demand. So they, 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 the, the customer give the measurement to them and they customize a dress for them. Fabulous. And, and also in terms of, yeah, in terms of color wise, uh, the pink and the mint blue, and also uh, pale lilac is very in trend. So for example, one of our fabric, this one is kind of like a, a jade kind of a effect. Uh, it's selling very well. Uh, I'm not trying to sell fabric, but just- No, no, it's say, great. Like, no, thank, you, no, thank you so much for giving us an insight. It's, it's great because it's very important. Uh, you know, your fabric supply, you're, deal, you're dealing with the studios in London, which are very fashion forward. So it's, it's, very, it's very useful information. Thank you so much for, for sharing. Yeah, so just like pink and uh, uh, kind of main grain and the uh, uh, pale lilac is, is very, also terracotta, uh, you know, some kind of cappuccino, all these colors are very indigos and yellows. Yellow is actually the year of Pantone color. So uh, it's, it's very uh, popular. Uh, yeah, in terms of, you know, texture of fabric and the colors, uh, that's my contribution. So leave, leave your contact details on the chat. And if anyone wants to contact you, 
uh, you know, they'll, they'll get in touch. Just <clears throat> before we close, just a few more. I see some very interesting panelists, which I want to speak to. Uh, Baltimore Design, how are you doing? Oh, wonderful. How are you? Hi, hi. So tell us more about, about, about women's wear trends that you're seeing and any, any other useful information that you'd like to share with people here. Sure. We are a middle and high school in Baltimore City. We are called to, we're like a charter transformation school, but we have a group of actually 535 students who are interested in design. And we have a fashion department in particular. Um, our students graduate, attend places like FIT, SCAD, um, and um, they have portfolios that they're working on now. And just one of the trends that I'm seeing is um, sort of, and I guess androgyny or um, clothes that aren't necessarily, and we have one student in particular who's doing a line of clothes that aren't necessarily for men or women, that they are um, unisex clothing. Um, I, I, we've been seeing that in terms of students interested in that. Also too, um, I've been seeing, we, we have a couple of students that did designs that involve their pets, like a whole line of clothing that would be clothing for a cat that would match the owner of the cat or a dog that would match the owner of the dog. So that's been kind of an interesting trend that we're seeing and the students are interested in doing. Wow, wow. Jade, Jade, I thought you were, you were nodding when you saw about the, pet, the pets because my, my dog's also going a little wild over here. So I think there's obviously some yeah. connections happening, yeah. Uh, Jade, would you like to add something? I just, I think that's, I think that's quite cool, actually, because it is, it is a massive trend, actually, at the moment, especially here, people dressing their animals up, um, and then matching as well. I've seen quite a few people with, like, matching jumpers, and the funny thing is, like, my partner, he was saying to me the other day, he wanted to get a hoodie, and he wanted my dog to have the matching hoodie, so it is a thing. <laughs> Great. I think not just the, the, the address with the, uh, uh, the pad also like the shoes the hairband uh people just really kind of uh, pursuing diversity and uh, live now just to create as much possible as <laughs> yeah it's, it's beautiful possible uh yeah so it's, it's really good and i think it's really good so i wanted to add something about the matching section part so I'm by my, myself working on a lot of that and I have family ordering a uh, matching outfit for the couple with the kids. And I do as well, uh, like a headband with the matching mask, uh, covering, um, let me, I don't know if you can see from here. So this set like this, matching with the outfit, with uh, the whole outfit, with the mask and uh, the head wrap with it or the jewelries that uh, match your outfit as well. So they can uh, even uh, broke it down and wear it as a uh, other set and like an outfit like this. I'm getting orders, a lot of people who order their matching outfit with the whole family and the colors that you was talking about, the soft color, a little bright and colorful and that you can wear soft pink, soft blue. And those are things, uh, colors that is uh, really being uh, used for the summer and people uh, that are the clothes from me. And like the matching things really, really works. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Uh, Lavia Couture, would you like to add something? Sure. Um, well, I, this is how I create. I'm mostly custom design. A lot of my clients range from singers, um, performers, music artists of all sorts, or just regular people that want something for um, themselves. I can turn around. Can I switch my camera? Of course, Let's of course. See. Please, please. <laughs> I'm trying to see which way. Uh... Let me go. Hold on, let's see. Well, I'll just turn my camera. I'll just turn it around. So this here, this is a cover-up for a beach garment. If you wear a swimsuit to the beach, my logo is actually foiled in here also. Um, I make leather shoes. These are from GOAT. The lining is pig. 
this is a matching bag that goes with that. And then this is also um, a pair of sandals. These are made from a jawbreaker style leather jawbreaker candy. And this is the backpack that goes with that. I embroidered this as well from machine. I'm trying to focus this from my front camera so you can see. And the same thing is on the front part of the shoes here. Um, this is another beach cover up. The flowers and everything everyone is speaking of on the sheer fabrics. Um, these are some leather and suede bags with um, snake skin and, and corporate. I'm sure you can see that. Um, there's three variations of this bag I did also. Um, someone was speaking about Shambori. I did this. This is Shambori dyed. Hold on for a second. This is Shambori. Um, dyed as well on chiffon with an embroidery of an elephant. This was from an Asian collection that I did some years ago. I did a Fashion Week Chicago at Water Tower, and this was a couple of, this is one of the things that I had there. Um, wow, wonderful. This, yeah, uh, this is a fur coat. Um, it's, this is, land, um, sorry, this is goat. It's uh, iridescent dots. And this is a blue rabbit that was dyed to look like clouded leopard. And the black is fox and also sheep. So this is how this looks flat out. It's a really cool jacket. I wear this myself. This is actually um, a lot of my own. But other than that, this is another one. This is a shearling. Uh, it's on green, green sheep with the gray cowhide. Uh, well, I have, yeah, quite a bit. Oh, and I also learned how to, I taught myself how to tambour bead from watching Chanel. I love the Chanel shows and couture. So this was a piece that I also tambour beaded. This was in Fashion Week Chicago as well at the Water Tower back in 2020 before the corona actually hit. Um, it's all hand done by me. I actually create all these myself after I design them, as well as I do for all my clients. Hopefully wow. everyone can see this. I'm using my front camera. Thank you, so, thank yeah, you so much. It. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Appreciate it. You know? and, 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 I, and, I, and I see and I see your love for animals. Yes, I do. I make garments for animals the way. So he has, he's actually dressed right now, but he's not around me right now. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. So uh, before we end today's session, I just want to ask uh, some of some of the last minute people who've come in. Rob Possell, would you like to add? Would you like to introduce yourself? Rob? You'll have to unmute. Hi, welcome. Hi. First of all, hi, everyone. Um, sorry, I'm so late. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm based in the UK, just outside London. Um, but I have to admit straight away that um, I'm semi-retired as I sold my company just over a year ago, but I'm still involved with the company on the consultancy side, which is a commonly used term. Um, but I wanted to uh, see what this was about. Unfortunately, I've got in very late. I've been at the office. Um, so, so tell us more about, about your brand or your company. What fashion were you into? I mean, it, it's very varied. There's a men's wear side and there's a woman's wear side. Um, we supply brands and retailers uh, with in we have our own in-house design um, and it covers brands I guess some upmarket brand for us would be Ted Baker um, and then we do, we do a lot for ASOS um, uh, Lipsy I mean there are a number of companies so, so you know what one question that I want to ask you which I think with your experience a lot of people over here could also gain from is because you 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 know you said someone you said Ted Baker ASOS now these are these are these are buyers that are really hard to get okay like we all know that and so can you just give us some of your experience uh, in the industry how have you how did you how did you grow your business to connecting with these people and how what was the best approach that you would recommend another person could could follow through okay a lot of it is timing. And, and therefore, it's that, that side of it is luck. Um, to try and get into a new business, off, a new customer, 
is often depends on whether another one of the suppliers is screwed up and you've just contacted them at the right time. Um, but, but other than that, you know, it's, it's a question of really doing your homework as to what the customer is about and where do you think you can offer them something extra. And you've got to be prepared to put in the time and the investment in, I would say, in terms of sampling and send them things because to get them to see you, most buyers will say, sorry, we'd, if you're lucky, they'll reply to an email. The chances are they won't even have the decency to do that. Um, and you've just got to be able to, you know, if you're not going to send them samples, which sometimes you may not want to, send them designs. Yes, there's, there's that chance that they may knock off your designs, but that's the chance you take. Um, and you've got to be able to prove to them why you think you will be better than somebody else. So it's not only the product. Price is not the, it's not the time to discuss price at the beginning, but you've got to know that you, you believe you could meet their price targets. Um, but it's being able to, you've got to have the confidence that you can supply them a product they would be happy with. A, the one is the design, B is quality. And don't ever forget, quality never goes out of style. Um, that's, that is it. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I can expand, but really that's, that's my recommendations. If you yeah. really believe in what you've got, don't give up. You know, Rob, you've, you've really touched some really interesting points and I'm sure people who are listening to you are really going to cherish your words. Is there any questions? Anyone have any questions for Rob? Because I see Rob is like a veteran. He's experienced. He knows what he's talking about. Does any one of our audience members have any questions for Rob? This is your time to ask him. Zem, Zem, Zem would you like to say something? Well, um... Actually, I am running out of time, but I cannot leave. It's so interesting. And coming to Rob, he's, he uh, really uh, said the most important thing, I say, to have like a, a, a strong identity. And even before I couldn't quite answer the question Adam asked me, how it is uh, to you know, maintain yourself uh, towards all the uh, competitors in the fashion world. If it comes to building up a brand, especially uh, in sustainability, um, we've been we've seen so much. We've out there. There was everything. So you really have to uh, go out strong and first identify your core values. And at the beginning, always a story is very strong. If you have a story as a brand, as a designer, and if you can uh, infuse that into your designs, that's great. But then. After that, the quality and the designs, they have to be great too. So for the first uh, season, you might get into a great uh, concept store, multi-brand store, but to maintain your success, you really have to deliver a whole package. And that is uh, for me as a designer, um, really a determination and also um, at the moment, uh, knowing uh, what my clients wants, like to balance all the facets of what the uh, industry wants and what I want to deliver. I have a question to you have as well. Um, since you, uh, uh, since you, are, you work with ASOS and Ted Bakers and all of these brands, uh, currently sustainability is a big agenda. And how do you see these uh, these top retailers addressing? Because I have been to a couple of meetings with uh, uh, some of the high streets, uh, but most of them are like looks greenwashing. So, what will be your opinion on that factor? I mean, for the future generations in fashion industry. Well, I think sustainability is becoming more and more and more important. Um, more, certain companies put more emphasis on it than others. There are also companies, and I won't mention names, that talk a lot, but turn a blind eye. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, sometimes I don't think they're as genuine as they are. But it's something that, as on the supply side, be you purely design or product supply, it's something you've got to be aware of and work towards. That is something that most major companies are 
aspiring to achieve sustainability in their product. And if it's something you can offer them and genuinely offer them, um, and they see an advantage in what you can offer them, that's something to, you know, to put on your CV, so to speak. Um, Pay the right but, price. At, uh, it's always at the right price. <laughs> you know, they, they, yeah, that's always the case. Um, you know, and what, what, what I would say to you is when you are approaching companies, don't compare yourselves to the product they've already got and say your product is better because you can soon come unstuck if they if you send them something and they say that you told us your product was better it's not better than what we've got so one's got to be careful you may think so in you in your heart in your mind that's great but don't ever tell them face to face but but every from the manufacturing perspective, uh, like for example, if it is a knitted manufacturer, if you go, if you go, you only supply them what you have, but they they want to surpass, uh, the, uh, you know, they expect the manufacturers to surpass their expectations, but that requires a lot of uh, investments from the sure. supplier side. But how are they catering to that factor of sustainability, supporting the small, uh, small and medium-sized manufacturers? I know you're um, not the right person to ask. I would ask this question to a brand, but as an agent, so I'm just asking this tricky question to you. So we would like to have your opinion. That's about it. it, it it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to answer because the, a lot of them will, and I think the bigger, the, often the bigger the company, the more, if I can use the word, and I hope you people don't mind bullshit yes. <laughs> that they give you, and it's not genuine, um, and that's that's the difficulty. And you know, when you're new to somebody, you say yes. You try and say yes to everything, and I would say be careful not to say yes unless you're sure of it. Um, but you know, how do they support you? I would say it is such a difficult thing to answer because there are companies we deal with who regard themselves as better than the rest in terms of their support for manufacturers. But when the crunch comes, it's not, very often it's not what you'd hoped for and expect. So don't, you know, it's, it's, it's sad, but that's the reality. Why would it, uh, brands can put, because they, they have a lot of R&D efforts, why couldn't they invest in, uh, it is just an opinion and talk, you know, why couldn't they invest in, uh, uh, in smaller, medium-sized companies to announce, uh, uh, you know, both the R&D pro process and also support the uh, manufacturing side? Don't you think so the oper 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 operating system must change? It's my opinion. It's a it would it it would be nice, but the the reality I don't, is very I think is very different. That a lot of them talk big, um, you know. And we've had issues in the past where one has said to us, um, you know, they'll come and inspect our factories and send in independent inspectors, um, which is you know, we don't have an issue with that. We want to make sure that the factories are safe first and foremost, that workers are treated properly and fairly, are paid a proper wage. Um, these are all important things. But don't that they can sort of come to you and say, well, we've, we've, there's a problem in your factory. Two of the lights in the emergency exit were not working. So we've got to put a stop to manufacturing for the moment. Are they not, but the brands are not going to do that. But brands are giving don't you think so? There is a process of subcontracting ha subcontracting happening within the system as well. So, oh, are you sure? There is, but you know, if if you, as a supplier, if if we're honest about what we're doing, if we we have to advise them if we we're subcontracting, and that that subcontract has got to be approved and meet all their standards. Um, yeah, you know, and then as I said, with this one particular. Um, company that we, we do business with uh, that were complaining about the lights and uh, 
I don't know, something of something other stupid wasn't right, which can easily be put right. Went to their office and they had a stand at the reception selling coffee with a coffee machine. And I said, them, how, have you checked whether this is safe? And they said, no. And I got so angry, I sent in a complaint. They didn't know who it was from. That before they start telling manufacturers, particularly in third world countries, what they've got to, you know, that every dot and every T, every dot, every I has got to be, you know, got to be dotted and every T has got to be crossed. Make sure that they, what is happening in their own country is right. You know, we have it in the UK. There are small manufacturers here and you can go and take a look and see, do they meet all the stringent requirements that companies will demand in third world countries? And very often the answer is no. Well, that's a nonsense. But don't you think so? The, uh, the system is, the legislation is made that it is, it is directed by the brands, not the suppliers. If the suppliers are- oh, it is by the brands, yeah. correct, for sure. Sure. by the brands yeah, yeah. uh i mean it's a very interesting conversation i would love to take your details uh, <laughs> you drop your details <laughs> i would love to connect with you personally M michelle from good brands uh would you like to add something because i i, I see there's a lot of synergy here with what I, i'm sure you could also add something to what rob said um, yeah well i i um i can only say this um, every company, of course, has to um, uh, define his um, rules and transparency and sustainability. And of course, you can buy the guts and all the uh, all the um, diplomas that you're going to get when you're producing for sustainability. What you're going to get, and I, I know this is costing a lot of companies a lot of money because they have to get these certifications and it costs money and you want to, you're going to be controlled and everything. Um, and as of course, an agency, an import company like we, we, um, we are not into these kind of things. Only we look at companies when they have this, if it's got certified, what they call in Germany, when it's controlled from the um, cotton plant plantage till the end product, then of course you know it is okay and it is it, it is controlled. Um, um, you know I don't have to tell you all uh, that after the oil industry, the fashion industry is one of the dirtiest industries in the world. So uh, this is what a lot of people don't know on the street, and this is what a lot of companies still don't know. And we are uh, spilling and making the world every day dirtier and dirtier with our fashion products. And talking about big, big companies or small companies, I think there is a whole trend going over to the attention for smaller companies. I mean, um, of course, the, the, the big companies still want to buy the brands. But at the end, if you want to survive as a local hero, as a local concept store, you don't have to buy the big brands. You have to buy smaller brands, which are also popular. Um, the bigger companies have the problem that they are too big. They cannot change. They have a system. Um, and like Nike and Adidas, they bring out um, a certain kind of styles for just a short period to, to, to be more emotional, to be more small than they are. Um, they also notice that being big is not always an advantage uh, in this kind of commercial way. Um, that is maybe a, w a strange way of thinking, but um, I think this is um, this is a new trend, and um, we're going away from the massa. We're going away from um, um, buying s a lot of stuff. Uh, we're going away from uh, buying a lot of pieces. We're going more to buying something emotional, buying something worthy. You see nowadays also in Holland that the average price of a fashion product is increasing. So people are buying less, but what they buy has more worth and has more uh, quality. Um, so this is a big advantage for our, our, our fashion um, uh, world. 
that this change is gonna is gonna move on, and uh, there's a whole new generation coming. Um, who also think totally different than, than let's say, the, 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 the Massa generation who was born after the war and also thought, who always thought in many pieces, big, 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 bigger, um, as I also did. But in, in a way, uh, just wanted to be clear, um, you know, not owning a car, not owning a house, not owning everything, uh, is going to be the new trend. And um, this is also what is happening in fashion. And we have to we have to watch this very carefully and see where this is going to end and how you're going to react with your product, with your brand or whatever. Um, it's a very complicated um, um, uh, way of how it, this is going to be for the next five or 10 years. Um, but I think we're gonna we're, we're staying uh, certainly after this whole COVID uh, situation last year and also this year. Um, we are we are we were already moving, but I think we're moving now faster and faster because there is a whole new mindset coming, and and hoping this this is going to open up a lot of new possibilities in our in our uh, market like to address because you are living in Poland I believe mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm seeing the Poland market the, uh, in my conversations with a couple of uh, European countries like Poland they truly believe in in the sustainability and protecting the nature but here in the UK what I'm seeing if the big uh, uh, boohoo and ASOS they have pre predominantly bought major sustainable brands and they are big, big companies, and they they even bought um, Debenhams online, and they bought uh, they bought all the data. Uh, so it is. Uh, so are they really doing any good good out there? And just uh, these brands, like you know, like like you said, but even how are the younger generation adapting to uh, the new era of sustainability? Is definitely a questionable thing to me. Well, being in the uh, <laughs> I, I understand what you mean, and I understand your vision. The only thing is, somebody told me, uh, who worked a lot of years for Adidas and, and, and grounded his own sneaker company a couple of years ago, he said to me, Michel, it started out with the food industry, where biological products and sustainable products are growing and growing faster than you can imagine, because people have to eat it, and they feel it, and they have to put it into their body. Then the, the whole cosmetic industry started out with this. And he says, and now it's going to be the fashion industry. So don't worry, UK, which is still an island <laughs> and is still not Europe. But believe me, it's coming up. I'm sure it will. I hope so. <laughs> At least good for our industry so that things can change for better. <laughs> Absolutely, it has to. It has to. Has to. You, you don't even. You do not, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not a producer, but uh, uh, the fashion industry, because it's people don't realize this. What 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 is happening in this industry, which is so dirty, um, uh, this this is has to change. It must, and the recycling of new material. The re, we are do also doing Swedish stocking from Sweden. It's uh, they. They taking the nylon out of old sports uh, clothes and out of um, let's say over overproduced sport clothing. They produce it 3D in Italy, and after the production, which is you know what is left over, they're sending it to Legoland and they're making with Lego. They're making new blocks. So I mean, there are so much more possibilities possible these days that. You know, people have to change their mindset. We only need something like, you know, we only need somebody like Elon Musk who start out a car company making beautiful cars, electric, and the whole industry is following, you know? I mean, this is what, what Elon Musk made in, a, in an industry which is totally blocked with BMWs and Mercedes and whatever. And he made an electric car which looks beautiful and drives beautiful and is worthy and uh, the whole industry is changing and um, we're waiting in the fashion industry this happens lowest industry yes. ever it's not car industry <laughs> no but i mean you know yeah. it will come. 
No, no, we, I mean, just for your info, we're doing recycled cotton products. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's becoming yeah. more and more common. Yeah. Well, recycling cotton is fine, but recycling polyester, even if you look at the process, the, the surplus is at the end of the day going to landfill. No, no, we, we're that's doing that. It's, ex, it's expensive. That's the problem. At the moment, it's very expensive. Yeah. But it's, 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 it, it is the future. Rob, it's not expensive. The only thing is the other industry is too cheap. <laughs> that that's also yeah, possible. Yes, I would agree with that. <laughs> the, the process is expensive as well yes. because it increases uh, larger carbon carbon footprints uh, by re-exporting, exporting, re-exporting re in terms of logistics. No one's talking about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. All right. <laughs> Good. So we we got Baltimore Fashion Week here. How are you? Welcome. I'm good. How are you? Sorry for the late arrival, but I am working from home, so. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for being here. So tell us more about what you do and any trends in women's wear that you'd like to share. Well, I love for the, um, the trends for fashion, it's really um, going to the left in a good way, I think, but, you know, I'm just the producer. And the designers that we have this year, one of them um, she she's doing streetwear, but it has a different spin to it. But I do like the way that the fashion is going. And I love the statement that um, good brands made where people are going to not be leasing, they're going to be renting or, you know, not really owning. Um, that's, I think that's how the fashion industry is going. I know for our production, I'm very um, I try to open the minds of the designers so that they don't live in the present, that they're constantly preparing for their future. So this just, just because you do our show, it should mean that this is like, okay, this is, you should want the next step up. And so with our production, that's what we kind of sort of work on. So this year we have, um, we're doing a virtual show for buyers only. Uh, that just changed 20 minutes ago. This, this, with this pandemic, this event has has evolved several times, and I just wanted to stand still. Um, so we just made that decision about 20 minutes ago that the show will just be virtual for the buyers that we are inviting um, internationally and nationally to the show to see the designers collection on the runway live, and they will be able to place orders for the collections uh, while the garments are coming down the runway, which is something I've wanted for about seven seasons and it's finally coming to fruition this year. And I'm really, it's a lot of work, but I'm really excited about it, especially for the designers. So are you keeping only Yay. designers from Baltimore? Are you keeping, are you, are you hosting international designers as well? We aren't, we didn't this year, but we normally do. We normally host two from Uganda every year. And we did have some interest. The interests are coming in now for the next year, for 2022, for the um, for next year, the 15th season. But the uh, reality of them getting a, a visa, if they don't already have a traveling visa, they have to get one. And now the embassy has changed their rules a little bit. So we before we would do whatever we could do le within legal realms of the foundation to, um, let the embassy know, or the consulate know that these designers were coming, they're fully vetted to participate in our show and that, you know, they paid their fees so they should get the visa to come, if only for the show. And so it's worked since forever <laughs> until 2020, that's when we came into a, a big hiccup. I mean, before the pandemic, because in April is when our registration ends for our show. So what is the process uh, that you, you that you do to evaluate a designer uh, before they can come and participate in your event? So what we do is each design, each interested person or party must go online and complete the registration form. But before I see them, they go through an onboarding process. And I thank God I'm no longer part of it. Before they would all see me and we would go through that um, dialogue but now we have uh, an individual in place that has been designing for maybe not that long but his knowledge in the fashion and constructing a garment is worth millions so they see him 
And once they pass, if they pass him, because he knows exactly what I'm looking for, I'm looking for rack ready garments. And my biggest pet peeve are clean seams. If there's seams on together, I can look at a garment and see that you didn't do the right stitching for the, the shoulder. I can look at it and see that you took the easy way out with the lining. And so now I don't have to do that anymore. I've done that for, since I started a while ago. And so now that's his job. And if they pass him, then they see me. If they don't pass him, they're given the opportunity to reevaluate their collection. If they want to construct another garment they, or three garments, they can, because you have to print, present between three to five garments. And if those garments are accepted, then you come to me. If not, you have the opportunity to reconstruct again, and it can't be the same garment that you fix. It has to be something new because you can't, for our show, you can't show any garment that's been shown in a previous production or show. Like it has to be something brand new every time they show with us. And so once they vet him, it's, we added that onboarding process in 2020, and it's been working really well. We had uh, 45, <laughs> it's not, I shouldn't laugh, but we have 45 designers to show up and we're showcasing four, and it has nothing to do with the pandemic. Wonderful, so thank these you. these are the, you're welcome. These are so the greatest. So I'm just going to try and make a connection here because at Fashionably and we make connections. Sophia Davis, are you here? Yes, I am. I'm here in New York City. So hey, how, Sophia. How, so how do you work? Hi, how, how would you how work you? with? How would you work with Baltimore Fashion Week? I would love to work with them. They are amazing. I know Baltimore Fashion Week. This is Baltimore Design School, I think. I've come to Baltimore Fashion Week for many, many, many years <laughs> and covered in our magazines. We've also put them in touch with Fashion Week producers up here in New York City because sometimes they want to come to New York and show. So we can do that. I'd love to, you know, just network with them because, of course, we feature in our, our publication upcoming designers. They don't have to be, um, you know, professional, super professional. So we give emerging designers the opportunity and a lot of the press we have. We also have numerous Fashion Week shows that sometimes have complimentary uh, entry for designers. And a lot of them are really, really good. And I know that uh, Baltimore has a strong fashion piece down there. I love it. So I'd love to network with them. Wonderful, wonderful. I've sent my information in the chat. So I want to thank everyone who's been here. We, you know, usually we end our sessions in an in an hour, but today it's it's gone for two to gone to two <laughs> hours. But it's, it was so interesting, and there were so many people. So uh, before we end, you know, I just want to uh, uh, ask anyone else if they would have anything they would like to share. You know, we've got very interesting people here. Um, um, Anyone want to share something before we end? Pariah, Powell, I think you would. Pariah, are you there? You have to unmute? Yes, I'm here. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? So so where, where are you based? And, and tell us more about what you do. I'm actually in the Midwest. I'm located in Indiana right now. And I'm a designer. I have an exclusive streetwear brand. Um, it's called Art Don't Give a F. I don't want to say the word, but that's what it stands for. And it's a brand for creatives, and it's just to teach people to transcend limits, create freely, and be free to be themselves. Um, I currently work in events and things like that, and I'm an entrepreneur, but, you know, it's COVID really just um, lit a fire in me to do what makes me happy and to represent others to just be themselves and, you know, create freely and do what you want to do. So my brand is to represent musicians, creators, designers, like anybody that creates. My brand is for them, and I'm looking to keep it exclusive. But um, since my launch just a month ago, I've gotten two celebrity clients. I'll be featured in a Netflix documentary coming up, and things have been moving fast. So I'm just looking to meet people to network with and um, manufacturers because I just signed up contract out of New York where they'll be doing, they'll be selling my line exclusively on their, their site as well. So um, 
that's in the works now. So I'm just looking to keep building and keep growing. So which so, are you, are you, is your line is your line more knits or is it wovens? Is it more knitwear? It's more just active wear, urban street wear. Um, I, I want to expand into more custom fabrics and couture and um, formal wear later. But with me just launching a month ago, this is kind of what I'm focusing on now. Um, streetwear is really big. And like I said, I want to stay exclusive. So I have a lot of one-on-one -on -one pieces with me being an artist. I do a lot of original artwork that I put on my clothing as well. Those are the more exclusive pieces. I have some leather pieces that I hand paint. And then I have, um, you know, my regular ready to wear pieces, two piece outfits, the comfortable wear that they were talking about earlier that people are into the tie dye um, with my embroidered logo and things like that on them. Wonderful, wonderful. So, um, so leave your contact details on the chat because that's where everyone will be able to contact you. And I'm just wondering, um, I'm just saying like Baltimore Fashion Week, if, 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 if Pariah wanted to, to come, what would the process be? How would she get in touch with you? Um, she can email me or, well, depends on what caveat she's interested in. So if she's interested in part, participating in the event, um, she would go online and register and then eventually I would meet her or if it's something else like she needs leads or how to do this or where should I go then she can just email me and I'll put that in the chat as well for anyone who needs it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, great. So I would like to once again thank everyone that came here today. It was it was a lot of fun and it was very interesting. And before we end, uh, I mean, does anyone else want to introduce themselves quickly or say something? And uh, what's this called? Michelle, we want to have you do the last words of wisdom. Uh, Michelle, you're there, right? Uh, we, we'd like Michelle to give us the last, last words of wisdom. I don't, know, I don't know if Rob's still around, but Michelle, uh, some last words that you'd like to share with everybody. Yama, I see Yama, you want to yeah. say something? Yeah, yeah. I'm here. Uh, yes, I would like I would like to ask if uh, you guys are going to share the chat and uh, the, the recording with us. And uh, besides that question is to thank you guys for really inviting me because uh, I, was, I, was, I was hesitant at first when I received the email, but this was really powerful <laughs> and... Uh, I learned a lot from everyone that was on this chat and it was really great. Thank you and your platform is really wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. So um, yes, so we will be putting the recording, the recording will be live and, and we'll send you the link. It's gonna be on, on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash fashionably in. And um, so just before we end right now, uh, Michelle, Please, final words of wisdom, and then thank you all for being here. Well, final, final words of wisdom are always uh, difficult to, uh, to say, but you know, I, 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 was, I was not expecting a lot from this meeting, but I, I must say I'm, um, I'm, ex I'm, I'm pretty excited about you know, people telling their story, telling their um, what they're busy with and what they're doing. Um, I think... Um, at the end, we need each other. We need each other. And, and the one is making a product, the other one is selling it. And the other one is contacting him because he can mean something for him or, or she. So um, we have an unbelievable, um, beautiful market, which is, believe me, it's going to be changing and it's going to be changing fast because the mentality and the way of the way the people living and are living is going to change and maybe the UK which is still an island in Europe is not going to pick it up so fast as we are but um, no I'm just kidding um, but I think um, we we need to change and uh, we need this new market this new philosophy this new way of living um, for our future for our kids and um, this is the only way I want to close and thank you uh, for your um, for your energy and for your uh, attention and uh, hope we're going to meet or treat or see each other somehow somewhere.
Yeah, you know, so hopefully our shows will start again in next year. Uh, at, you know, Fashionably Inn is going to be live in London again, you know, physically. So we would love to see everyone, you know, I mean, you know, this is a meeting place and London is the center of the world. So, yeah. But thank you again for everything, really. It was a real pleasure. And I hope, uh, so June 12th to June 15th, June, June uh, 12th to 14th is our next uh, webinar, which is going to be three days uh, back to back. It's going to be very interesting because we're going to have uh, meetings and sub rooms and sub meeting rooms. It's, it's like we've got like 20, 30 people who are going to be working behind the scenes to put this three day festival, virtual festival together. And um, it's, it's completely free to join. And obviously, uh, we make money when people buy our membership. So if anyone's looking to grow their business, meet more contacts, get connected with buyers, sales agents, hit me up because we have our fashionably in membership and that's what we do. And that's what we do best. Like how we all got you here. That's what we do. We get everyone together and that's what makes us happy when people meet because that's what, that's when we know that we're doing something good, you know? So thank you all for being here. Thank you. All right. Take thank care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you very much. It's a nice meeting. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.